when I decided to do the bottle house, it was like, you know, are you crazy? You know, making a house out of 4,000 bottles. And then when I was at the headlands, this guy came up. I didn't know who he was. He had on a plaid shirt. He may have even had on plaid pants and this crazy uh, tie and a baseball cap. And I was thinking, well, you know, he's a little too smart to be homeless. And he said, I want to buy this house. And I, I thought he was kidding. And then later, this guy came back again, and he said he wanted to buy this bottle house, and it was, his name was Rene De Rosa. Is he serious? And he, I found out he was. And that, it was like I couldn't believe it, someone who is just as crazy as I am. It's just on a field of maybe five acres, and I remember first seeing it after it was installed, and it was like there was clover, and there was the bottle house, and it just made me really happy. Since there, they are wine bottles, it seemed as though it was just waiting to make a voyage up to the Napa Valley so it could feel really at home. René de Rosa has been collecting art since the 1960s. More specifically, he's been collecting Bay Area art, with a particular eye for emerging or unknown artists. Well, without question, he is the single most important collector of Bay Area artwork in the world. I mean, there is nobody whose collection even comes close to um, being as extensive um, and representing so many Bay Area artists. My greatest pleasure is uh, looking for art and finding it. Whatever sanity I maintain is maintained by being able to go out and finding the unfound artist. When the artists are actually at their easels painting, I really like that. I like to watch them. Howdy doody. Uh, I'm wondering what your What's happening here? Well, I'm using um, reproduction fabric from the uh, 50s and 40s, and I'm trying to, I guess, juxtapose kind of modern violent images against the innocence of childhood. I've never seen anyone honor art more than he has, and I see that when he is talking to an artist or listening to an artist. I see it when he's looking at art as an artist, I don't think anyone has ever made me more elevated than seeing that. It makes you feel s valuable and it makes you feel necessary in a way that uh, financial gain or acceptance and other things can't do at all. I like that. There are a lot of people who wait until the rest of the public or other collectors or critics or whomever says, this is what you should collect. Rene doesn't do that. In fact, he almost rebels against that. He doesn't want anybody to tell him what to collect or how to collect or who to collect. Um, he goes for what it is that you know excites him. The real passion for Rene is the sense of discovery. And if everybody lays it out for him exactly what's out there to be discovered, then, then he's not doing the discovery. So anyway, this green woman was uh, the first uh, picture that I'd ever bought. I, I, I probably spent all of uh, $250 or $300, and I was in Paris, uh, and there was a gallery there that I passed uh, every day on my way to get a cup of coffee or something. I met the artist. And it turned out that we had something in common that was amazing. And that sort of got me interested in uh, uh, the visual arts. I keep going back to certain galleries because they show the kind of work I like. And I guess I don't feel that the gallery owner is going to walk around with me and say, isn't that beautiful, isn't that great, or we're, you know, all of that stuff, expecting me to uh, you know, 
to agree with her or him. As time goes on, I find that I'm uh, drawn to whites uh, more than I used to be, much more than I used to be. Color has always been important to me. And now I find that uh, this appeals to me. Perhaps it's a rest from color. I think this is the one that I want. Okay, do you want to just let us know? Yes. Yeah, okay, I that shall. sounds good. Okay. okay. Thank you. Particularly during the time that Rene was collecting in the second half of the 20th century when he really started and got his stride, nobody was paying attention to the Bay Area much and artists were really not following the dictates of, of anybody except themselves and their friends, certainly. And so I think part of the richness of the Bay Area has been um, the individuality um, that has been expressed by artists here. This is the art of where we're living, and these are the artists that, uh, that give our communities a liveliness and also a depth. DeRosa's collection of more than 2,000 works of art by more than 750 Bay Area artists fills the property he calls home in Carneros Valley near Napa. Called the DeRosa Preserve, these 47 acres also serve as a wildlife refuge. It's a place where art and nature share the landscape. As I recall, you purchased this property in the early 60s, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and were there any vineyards in Carneros at that time? No, there's one. So you were a pioneer there as well? Well. Uh, was it your vision that you would have this type of a, a group of facilities to house your art, or was no, it some I didn't other have purpose? the art. You didn't have uh, no, the art? I sold the vineyard to have, to have the money to buy the ah, art. Ah, okay, well. Yeah, you're gonna have to squeeze. Yeah. His private home was overflowing with art, so Rene decided it was time to create a place where he could display his vast collection for the public. The preserve now includes three large galleries and a sculpture meadow that are open to public tours. It occurred to me that all of the art should be shown, and uh, it should be shown to more than just uh, weekend party people. Uh, it should be shown to a larger population. I had no idea that there was this much art in one location. The variety is so dramatic and so open, and it leads to a lot of imagination. The collection to me is so much California. It's so jolly and vibrant and alive, and, and I'm seeing things that I've never seen in shows before. In fact, I think this is a much better show than you normally get to see anywhere. It beats the museum, quite frankly. Unlike most museums and galleries, the works at the DeRosa Preserve are presented without wall labels. Each piece is numbered, however, and if you want to know more, you can ask or look it up in the index. When I went to uh, museums, I would see people uh, glancing at the uh, glancing at the, the picture and then studying uh, who gave it, uh, when was it done, and a lot of stuff. And they went from a wall label to wall label, just glancing at the picture, and that bothered me. So I decided to hell with wall labels. Just being able to sit with a piece and connect with it first without going and who's the artist and where does it come from and what's it made out of versus just sitting with the art for me is um, really unique and special in that sense. 
It's wonderful that this art has been collected, that somebody cared for this and loved this and lives with it. And, you know, and then you get to come here and see it in the house as, as it's been lived for all this time, lived with for all this time. I was thinking that uh, artists are wildflowers. They enhance our, our landscapes and uh, nourish us and sometimes free us a bit. Mm -hmm.